Welcome to Reddit Stories featuring Pro Revenge Thread. Our next story is from someone who deleted his account on on Reddit. Well, you will learn later on from the story why. Company A screwed me, so I helped the federal government to screw them back 10 million times worse. This was back in 2015. I had recently been let go from my previous gig. My dad has just been diagnosed with cancer, and due to my less than killer performance in channel partner sales, they needed me to start working weekends. Of course, this was a non-starter with my dad being sick, so we shook hands and went our separate ways. No hard feelings, but now I'm out of work. Crap. A month or two later, I was offered a great job with a large company that was a sizable bump in pay and a much better title. So, of course, I accepted, but I had to move across the country to take this job, but it was worth it. And dad seemed to be on demand and the cancer seemed to be in remission, so I felt okay with moving away. At the time, I lived about 30 minutes away from my parents. The new company was a massive short-term lending company with over 1,000 locations across the U.S. and was the leader in payday loans, title loans, etc. I didn't love the idea of working for one of these type companies, but I figured people make poor financial decisions all the time and no one is forcing them to take the loan and they likely understand what they are getting into. Important note, my job at company A was basically to line up partnerships to help drive referrals to us from people looking for loans, but then qualify for a real bank loan, etc. I quickly ramped up the money revenue to one million per month in just a few months being there. Everyone was nice, seemed like a good gig, except for one ex-army a-hole who I'll call Sergeant A-hole, who would make snarky comments about everyone, watch the clock and report you to HR if you came in at 9.05 a.m. instead of 9 a.m., leaving at 4.45 p.m., not 5 p.m., etc. You get the picture. Part of my job was to audit the third-party applications to verify the loans that occurred and the loan balance, slash amount to calculate the referral commission for the affiliates, basic due diligence but i had to look at the contract for the loan they signed and accompanying terms and conditions and that's when i started seeing red flags left and right people on welfare or social security taking loans against their car title with payment terms they would never be able to pay back or old ladies taking out a personal loan against their social security payments to help pay for their grandkids school books etc. Just heartbreaking scenarios. Having a background in business finance and business law from college, I knew they were royally screwed the moment they signed that contract and would eventually lose their only car through repossession, be forced to sign over social security checks to make due on the loan, as they unfortunately agreed to that in the contract. Just awful things. I started bringing this up to any exec or leader that would listen. They all said, okay, but no change happened. I think we all felt super crappy as a group about this company deep down, but it's our livelihood. Around this point, my gut kept telling me to document this and keep it for some reason. I didn't know what I would do with it at that time. I just felt this urge to do so, so I did. I stayed and started collecting every bit of info I could find on them, coercing people, even illiterate people, into signing the loan. I saw this in person multiple times during store audits, basically using sleazy used car salesman tactics to close the loan. Company A intentionally not explaining that the 28% interest is monthly, not annual, and you have to basically close the loan every month it's not paid in full, and sign a new one every month with new interest, carry over from the previous balance, plus new fees, several hundred per loan, basically every month, and overall just taking full advantage of desperate, financially illiterate people. Fully knowing they couldn't ever pay off the loan, 
and they would milk them for every dollar, then repo their car and sell it auction, or threaten to make the past loan payments known to their employer and threaten to garnish wages. Just horribly crappy, mean-spirited business practices. I hated it and hated company A and everyone in leadership that knew this was happening and basically said, this is our business practices. It's legal. I knew full well it was not legal or ethical. I followed my gut instinct and had one of those mini handheld scanners and would print off every CFPB federal violation I came across. I'd scan it and save it, compile it at home on an SD card. Fast forward a few months, my birthday is coming up and I had planned to take a week off to celebrate my family back home with my dad very sick at this point. I knew this was my li likely my last birthday with him. We had a blast, definitely top five family memories of all time. We lived it up and did everything we could to think of together. The time comes to go back to work in the other state and I didn't want to leave, but told my mom, I will come back home in a heartbeat when you need me to. I get back from paid time off. The next day, Monday, mom calls, Dad is in very bad shape. I run it by awesome boss who says, don't talk, go home, come back when you're ready. Awesome, amazing guy with a huge heart. He will always have a special place in my heart for that response. He understood work was not important right now. For context, Sergeant A-Hole was passed over for awesome boss job and it was given to awesome boss instead. So from day one, Sergeant A-Hole had it out for all of us and he wanted that gig and was determined to get it by any means necessary. Day two, Tuesday, come back home, back home, awesome boss calls me, tells me he's been fired. Apparently, Sergeant A-Hole complained to the CEO and the COO about his lax approach to his team, letting me just leave without approval, etc. And now Sergeant A-Hole is my boss and awesome boss lets me know that Sergeant A-Hole will probably fire me too once I get back. So I wanted to give me a heads up with everything else I was dealing with. He just didn't want me to be blindsided. A number one guy. I stay through the funeral, then fly back to face the music. 10 minutes in, Sergeant A-Hole calls me into this office, tells me I violated company policy by taking unapproved time off and that we needed to talk to HR. I explained what happened, dad passed, funeral, mom is distraught, etc. He says, I'm sorry that happened, but company policy doesn't excuse that. The lady in HR felt so bad I had to be fired by the COO nonetheless. Tell, I tell her I've only been here four months and I spent all my savings relocating down here for the job. This really puts me in a difficult financial situation. She says she work hard to get me some severance as I don't qualify for unemployment yet being there for just a few months. Sergeant Ahol chimes in. Well, you know, you won't qualify anyways. You're being fired for non-compliance and excessive absences. Okay, what the frick, dude? HR calls me on the phone the next day saying Sergeant Ahol contacted the COO to make sure I didn't get any severance. So now I'm broke five months into a 12 month lease with no money and no job. I'm a crap creek without paddle and without my go-to guy, my dad in this situation. I had to sell most of my stuff, pack up and move home to live with my mom. Now comes the righteous revenge. I tried to be civil, but the new boss, the exec team played dirty. The time of reckoning is now. I remembered my database of incriminating practices that violated CFPB guidelines. Call a boss and boss to get his feedback and advice, and he wants to help. Now we have a team. We spent the next several weeks building a massive file to submit to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau for unfair and predatory lending practices by Company A, which we were somewhat complicit in, but both voiced our concerns, but we needed to make this right. We knew he had been part of this monster. It's the least we should do to correct it. 
I gave everything I had to my awesome boss, now teammate, and we provided the CFPB everything I had seen in the brick and mortar locations. All the incriminating docs I had and gave two detailed written statements of our concerns about Company A to the CFPB for their investigation under the condition of anonymity. We never heard back and assumed nothing would come out of it, but we did our best to right this wrong we had participated in. Unknown to us, there were thousands of complaints against Company A by consumers, and Awesome Boss let me know he heard from them, and what we provided helped them build their cases against Company A. Awesome Boss cost me about five months later, now early 2016, to let me know the CFPB called him and something is about to happen. This led to a fairly large consumer protection investigation into Company A, unknown to me and awesome boss at that time. But another several months passed, didn't hear or see anything. So I figured that they hired some top shelf lawyers and made it go away. That is until June of 2016. While drinking coffee and applying for new jobs at my mom's house in morning, I was watching CNBC and here Company A's name comes up. I turn to watch and see that they are getting hit with huge fines, legal fees, and their business has to basically stop all business until the case is resolved. To this day, there are still tons of pending class action lawsuits and regional government actions against them. Too long then, we, former company, fired me for taking unapproved paid time off when my dad died, withheld my severance, so I reported them to the feds with what I knew about their illegal practices. The federal government fined them 10 million and almost shut down the business. I guess that explains best why the, uh, the person who posted the story had to delete his account, but his account may be deleted, but the story stayed there, so it's still available for us to read. So hopefully um, that would satisfy your daily dose of Reddit. No pun intended. I know there's another channel with that name as well. So hopefully um, there would be another day I would get to read another Reddit story from you. In between the Reddit stories, I would be posting excerpts from the bar review I'm currently undertaking some of them preferably the ones that are safe to share you definitely be alerted once you like share and subscribe to this channel and hit that bell to be immediately notified of the latest uploads so thank you and see you on the next video bye bye